Uh, we will now look at the instruments and uh, other equipment in uh, this uh, 300 horsepower PL12, which is, has been in service for some 1130 hours over a period of five years. We'll initially start uh, at the bottom of the instrument panel and we have uh, the master switch and alternator switches which we'd switch on and we would then check circuit breakers. These are all the circuit breakers for the different equipment. Navigation lights, the two navigation lights on the wings, uh, an interior cabin light, uh, the master switch and then the little switch for the light on and off up here. Our landing and taxi lights uh, and the uh, electric fuel pump. We'll just turn those off for now. We won't need them again. Coming across we have the uh, park brake. Normal, uh, the same as the 185. Press the tops of the uh, rudder pedals, pull the uh, park brake knob out and uh, the brakes are on. Ignition switches. Exactly the same, we have off position, right hand magneto, left hand magneto, both, and all the way around to start. Just a normal amp meter gauge. Our engine gauges here are cylinder head temperature, oil temperature, and up the top oil pressure. Coming across we have the uh, TACO, or the tachometer. We have the um, manifold pressure gauge and the fuel flow gauge. This instrument here is a counter that we count the loads. For each load we uh, do in the aircraft, we can just account for it, and by turning that knob we can just set it back to zero. Next we have the store warning light. This light comes on uh, about five to ten knots before the stall. We have our airspeed indicator, our altimeter, which we set to uh, the airfield height again, our turn and bank indicator, rate of climb indicator. Up the top here, as you saw before, we've got the, uh, the instrument light. Here we have a, uh, a weight gauge, which tells us uh, the uh, weight in kilograms of the load we put in. Hopper contents gauge for when we're using liquids. A spray pressure gauge and our spray pressure adjustment. Uh, further up the windscreen we have the uh, magnetic compass here and then we'll move down to the um, equipment on the uh, left hand side of the aircraft. The first thing we come to is the dump lever. All the way forward for uh, the, uh, the hopper dump closed and all the way back for the hopper dump that's open and uh, for spreading of uh, fertilizers uh, we have settings all the way in between. Coming up here now to our engine instruments, we have the throttle, push it forward for full throttle and all the way back for fully closed. Pitch control, exactly the same, fully forward for fine pitch and fully back for full course pitch. The mixture control is on the same uh, quadrant, we just lift it up for uh, full rich mixture and all the way down for full lean mixture. The fuel control, we have a four position control, all tanks off or both left tanks on or both uh, all, all, all four wing tanks on or both right tanks on. We also have on either side two emergency uh, fuel cutoffs which cuts the fuel off uh, to the engine completely. Uh, the next thing we have is the uh, trim wheel, elevator trim. Uh, wind it forward for nose down trim, wind it back for nose up trim. The next control we have here is the, um, the flaps. And these are electric flaps. And it's worked at the uh, little buttons push forward and the flaps are up. And we pull the button back and the flaps will go down. We have a little uh, indicator here and it's... Uh, Got 0, uh, 10, 20 and 30 degrees marked on it. The um, other control we have is uh, for the spraying mode. It's just a, an open and close spray valve. We just push it forward to open and pull it back to close. And uh, the other 
thing we have in here is a button on the right hand side we lift it up and it's our cabin heat uh, push it in and it turns the heater off now the other thing we have in this uh, aircraft being an agricultural aeroplane is a full harness inertia reel type seat belt As you can see, we have movement all around, or there is a uh, little button here that we can actually lock the seat belt so it locks us firmly in place. Uh, the pre flight check for the uh, PL 12. Uh, as with uh, all agricultural aircraft, the first thing we always check is the, the dump lever for full movement uh, to make sure that the, uh, the hopper gate does open if we require dump. Check that the uh, magneto switches are off. It's a good idea just to take the keys out to make sure that they are. And uh, switch the master switch on. Lower the flaps for the uh, inspection of the flaps and the hinges. Check that the master switch is off. Turn our fuel on. And then we visually uh, check the uh, tank caps on top of each wing and also the contents uh, through the fuel gauges in the tops of the wings. And uh, check the control column just for full free and correct movement before we actually get outside and check the controls. The uh, external uh, walk around uh, for the pre-flight inspection, we start by checking that the uh, passenger door is closed. Next we'll check uh, the hopper base on the left hand side, it's, uh, it, all the uh, linkages are secure and if we have closed it on the inside that it's actually closed so there will be no leakages. Next we will uh, do a fuel drain check on the uh, two tanks on the left hand wing. Checking uh, as before for uh, any sediment water. We start checking the uh, all the panelling and the skins for any distortion, cracking. The hinges for the flaps here for uh, check that they're uh, secure. There's no cracking around uh, the attach points. Uh, the pins are in the bolts. Coming along the same uh, on the top of the, um, the stub wing and uh, the struts are secure, all bolts are attached. Next we uh, come along and check the tail booms, uh, just check the uh, mirror for security. Uh, Check the, uh, the flaps, there's no buckles on the uh, top ends of the flaps. And then we move along the tail boom, just checking the, uh, all the fairings are secure. There's no uh, cracking around the rivet points. On the tail section, same again, no crack it around the rivet points. All the fairings are secure. Uh, the rudder hinges, pins are secure. The uh, cables and attachments are secure. The rudder moves correctly. Check the uh, leading edge of the tail plane. Coming around and check the uh, hinges of the elevator. Check that it, it moves correctly and also that the trim tab moves as we move the elevator. Around this side, same procedure, checking the hinges. Cable secure, no cracks, leading edge, coming back up the boom, no cracks in the, uh, the rivets of the boom, the fairing is secure, again no cracks along here, the ailerons, pins are secure, there's no uh, denting all under the wing, the uh, Inspection panels are secure. The ailerons for correct movement.
The other rail are on attachment point. Just gently give the aircraft a shake. There's no uh, dinning or buckling. Now we're coming along the leading edge. Just check that there's been uh, no dents over the previous day. The uh, stall warning. It uh, is preferable here if we can get somebody in the aircraft and switch the master switch on uh, and check the stall warning is actually working by the little red light on the dash. As we come along, the security of the uh, two wing fences, uh, the strut security bolts are in place. The pitot tube is free and also the static vents that are around the pitot tube are, are free. Leading edge of the uh, stub wing, no dents, no distortions and then underneath to the, uh, the wheel, check the wheel nut is uh, secure, there's no leakage around the uh, oleo struts, no cracks on the tyres, it's inflated correctly. And we just check for wear of the uh, the brakes, and there's no uh, brake fluid leakage. Coming along, we uh, check all the uh, mechanism for the front of the hopper, and uh, we'll do the other side as we go around. Next, we check the uh, fuel drain. We normally have to open these cowls here. We just uh, can just check for fuel out of the strainer. clear and then we check in the engine compartment now what we're looking for here is uh, all the um, rods are secure pins are in the rods there's no cracking of rods there's no uh, fuel leakages the engine mounts no cracking uh, the rubbers are secure exhausts are secure uh, general condition inside is clean there's no massive oil leaks uh, checking for birds' nests. Birds uh, do have a tendency to get inside. Uh, there's no leakage from the battery on the other side. Uh, once we're uh, happy with that, we come down, check the uh, the trim vane for the nose wheel is secure. There's no cracking or bending. The cowls are there's no cracks in the cowls. Once again, the same with the uh, the front wheel here. Uh, tires for cracking. Uh, the nuts on, uh, check the strut for leakage, security. Coming up to the uh, the oil cooler, check that the oil cooler is not blocked. Come up, check inside the cowl here for uh, any oil leaks, any oil leaks around the uh, propeller hubs, any nicks and scratches on the uh, propellers, and then pull it through. On the right hand side of the cow we just check the uh, air cleaner is, uh, is clean and uh, there's no uh, leakage in the battery. The battery leads are all secure and then we can close the cowling just uh, by doing up the, the exhaust fasteners. Once the cowl's secure, then we just continue around the right-hand side of the aircraft, uh, doing uh, exactly the same checks on the wings and uh, the elevator booms. Uh, Pre-start checks in the PL-12. Initially, uh, fasten your seatbelt, check the controls are full, free and correct. Set the park brakes on. Uh, fuel selection to the uh, desired tank or to both tanks as we normally use. And the fuel gauge is out in the wings. Uh, for enough fuel for the flight, plus 45 minutes. Set the uh, mixture to idle cutoff 
and propeller to uh, full fine. Check the throttle for operation, and our friction nut is firm. And uh, check the control, uh, trim control for free movement. All the instruments are checked and uh, correct. Uh, electrical equipment is all off. And there's no loose articles in the aircraft, and the door is locked. Uh, to start the uh, PL12, pitch to full fine, mixture in the um, full rich position, <clears throat> throttle set approximately half inch open. This is the uh, hot starting technique we're using now. Master and alternator switches uh, to on, fuel pump on for two seconds, then off. Throttle set quarter of an inch open. Idle cut off to uh, mixture to idle cut off and start winding the aircraft over. All clear. As the aircraft uh, fires. Mixture to full rich. If the aircraft tends to die, just use a uh, quick flick on the fuel pump. Oil pressures are up, uh, the temperatures are already in the green, which means uh, that we can start to move off. Takeoff checks. Start with the aircraft trim, checking the uh, trim is set for takeoff in the center. Our mixture is in rich, master switches are on, magneto switches are both. Fuel we have set on uh, both for takeoff and uh, Enough fuel for uh, the flight. Flaps checked all the way through and set for takeoff. Instruments. are all set and checked. Taxing the PL-12, because it's a uh, nose wheel aircraft, the uh, PL-12 is a very easy aircraft to taxi, simply by the use of the rudder pedals, and which uh, in turn works the uh, nose wheel steering, as can be seen it's uh, very effective. The thing to remember is not to taxi too fast especially uh, when the aircraft is in the agricultural uh, configuration and uh, heavily loaded.
uh, this point we'll just check our switches. Normal left magneto, we have a rev drop of approximately 50. Right magneto and a rev drop of approximately 50 and then back to both. Pitch control to full course and back to full fine. And check the RPM stabilizers. An idle check. Controls are full free end, correct. Hatches locked. Setting the aircraft up for takeoff, lining up on the runway. In the early stages of the takeoff roll, uh, directional control will be solely by the use of the nose wheel. We keep slight forward pressure on the control column, uh, keep the nose wheel firmly on the ground, apply power, full power. And now a view from the ground of a PL-12 taking off. Turn to the right, 
flight back pressure on the control column and lead him with a little bit of rudder to keep the aircraft balanced. The same turns viewed from the ground. the attitude with continued back pressure. The stall warning light will come on approximately 10 knots before the stall. Slight buffeting, the nose will drop away and the aircraft stall at 55 knots in this configuration. Using full power, relax the back pressure and ease out of the dive. The aircraft is stable condition reset into the uh, cruising configuration. We'll just have a look at that stall again. Closing the throttle, mixture fully rich, pitch full fine, holding the nose attitude. Stall warning light coming on. Approximately 10 knots before the stall. Aircraft stalls, buffeting, relax the back pressure, full power. And aircraft stable, he's out of the dive. We need to go down quicker, we just uh, reduce our manifold pressure and the aircraft will descend at a faster rate.
bringing the aircraft uh, under a base leg, going to decrease our rate of descent at this point by increasing uh, our power. The aircraft's a very easy aircraft to land. The airspeed that I uh, will be using will be 70 knots on the approach. And I'm now applying uh, some 20 degrees of flap. Turning on the final. And trimming the aircraft to 70 knots. Watch out with the PL-12, as if we don't leave our round out too late as we are sitting very high in the cabin. As we come over the fence, brakes, undercarriage, pitch to full fight and bringing the airspeed back to 60 knots, rounding the aircraft out, closing the throttle. The aircraft's main wheels are on the ground, hold forward, so as we have that uh, nose wheel steering once again. As the aircraft comes to a stop, raise the flaps. Now a landing from the loader driver's view. PL-12's dual tail is specially designed for easy fertiliser loading. 20 seconds is the average loading time. Fully loaded, the aircraft flies with a nose-up attitude. A loaded plane in a stall. A short field takeoff in the PL-12. Make sure the aircraft is lined up on the runway. Control column forward to uh, keep the uh, nose wheel on the ground. Apply power smoothly and fully, feet on the brakes. Normal uh, short field technique. Let the aircraft roll. 40 knots. Control column to the central, 50 knots. Rotate the aircraft and fly away at uh, 60 knots. the obstacles, power back to uh, normal flying power. Flaps retracted.
could be in the vicinity. set the aircraft up at uh, 70 knots, 20 degrees of flap, and power to control your rate of descent. Bringing the speed back to 60 knots, applying full flap, we're looking to touch down at the runway threshold. The last 100 feet, bring the aircraft speed back to 50 knots, using power to control your rate of descent. The aircraft will settle on the ground, nose down, and fairly hard braking will bring the aircraft to a very quick stop. Next, we'll uh, look at the crosswind takeoff. Control column forward, aileron into wind. Apply power smoothly and fully. Same technique, keeping the uh, control column fully forward. So as we have uh, directional control from our nose wheel steering, keep it straight. Bring the ailerons back to the uh, central position and lift the aircraft up slightly faster than normal, kicking the aircraft into wind so as we crack out on an extended centre line of the runway. approach speed, trimming the aircraft to 70 knots. Turning on the final, making a late turn on the final due to the headwind component in the crosswind. Aircraft, rate of descent with power, airspeed, now attitude. We're grabbing into wind. 
pitch breaks. As we ran out, kick the aircraft straight, wing down, closing the throttle, holding the wing down, keeping it straight, holding it, the aircraft touches down, lower the uh, other wheel and the nose drops forward and we have positive nose wheel steering once again to keep straight on the runway as we slow down ailerons in the wind. Come to a stop, flaps up, 